in this video, there's a steaming pot of broth on her boat. You'll witness Southern Vietnam's iconic boat noodles, served hot, fresh, and on the water. I can't imagine a better moment. Does it get better than this? But let me back up. So far, this countrywide noodle tour has brought us from Hanoi into literally heartwarming to Hue. I've always wanted to lose some weight. This is the way to do it. And Ho Chi Minh City. Take a look at that. Oh, gosh. Today, we complete our noodle journey in Vietnam's Mekong Delta. Ahoy! <laughs> is that what you're supposed to say? Are they pirates? The Mekong is different from anywhere else in this country. Who's selling a double decking cheeseburger right now? A vast network of rivers and streams. You should ask her what her website is. On Facebook, on Facebook, hey, yeah. Did she just say what's Facebook? <laughs> yeah. Where locals have learned not to fight against Mother Nature, but to work with her. New geography meets new ingredients. Fish literally from a foot away from us. Yes. And noodles like you've never seen before. <laughs> it all starts here. Calvin, we have just arrived here in one of the most unique markets you'll find anywhere in any country. I love this place. Welcome to Long Swin. Out here on the Mekong, rivers have turned into highways, and spots like this have become produce markets on the water. Through its 2,700-mile journey, the Mekong's nutrient-rich waters bless all those it passes by, meaning farmers here are able to generate a huge portion of this country's agriculture. You see they have these banisters here at the top of it. Whatever vegetable or fruit they specialize in, a pineapple, they'll put it up there. Who's selling a double bacon cheeseburger right now? Oh, oh my God, I wish one of them did have a bacon cheeseburger on top. Wherever you find large collections of people, you'll find someone who wants to make a business by feeding them, even if it's on the water. We're coming up on another boat now. I do see coconuts. How do you say coconut? You? Hi, Jai Yu. I think you should just do the ordering. Jai Hi, Jai Yu. Wow, look at her just chop that. There's nothing that that knife cannot cut. Oh my god, that sweetness is amazing. Gatorade has nothing on this. Refreshing, electrolyte, all natural, no GMO. I mean, you're quite the marketer for this woman. You should ask her what her website is. You got web home, got Facebook home. Facebook, hey, yes. Depending on the day, you can spot vendors selling Vietnamese coffee or a variety of noodles. Oh, I see it, dude. There's a steaming pot of broth on her boat. Conveniently delivered right to your starboard side whoa, whoa, whoa. for just a buck or two. Hi, Sin Chow. Uh, Calvin, please translate. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, man. This is Miss Duit. She's been gliding up and down this river, blessing locals with her flavorful offerings for over 20 years. This is an iconic Mekong noodle dish. Boon Kat, rice vermicelli, local fish, and plenty of extras piled on top. During breakfast and lunch, she makes her way from vessel to vessel, docks briefly, and whips up a bowl. When the meal is finished, the bowl is returned, and she continues on her way. But let's back up. This noodle operation simply is impossible without waking up at ungodly hours of the morning. Miss Duet prepares her food for the day inside her home. Grilled pork, fried fish, a rich savory fish bone broth, vermicelli noodles, and a load of fragrant veggies. Each food is collected and walked down the dock where she carefully descends to her boat with her valuable ingredients consuming nearly all the space on board. She gently pushes off and paddles her way into the sunrise. Where she'll eventually meet me. Fantastic, can we have uh, two, please? Hi, Tho. Our bowl starts with shredded morning glory, bean sprouts, Egyptian river hemp flowers, and vermicelli rice noodles. She sinks it in her steaming hot broth, not just for a moment. Oh, the broth doesn't stay? When do we get broth? Chunks of fish, pork, string beets, and veggies join in. Then she douses the bowl in broth, this time for real. The finishing touch, Vietnamese coriander, pork fat, fish sauce, shrimp salt, and chilies. This bowl is absolutely scorching, sizzling. Oh. There's a lime on here. Give that a little bit of a squeeze. Squeeze away. That broth looks so rich when she poured it out. Oh, it's so spicy. 
I taste turmeric, I taste spice, it's very savory. It's sweet, the fish sauce is very light. These are very simple ingredients, and she made something really beautiful out of it. And fish, fish literally from a foot away from us. Mm. Mm. I like the turmeric on that fish. The more and more I dig into this noodle, the more and more flavor comes out. This to me looks like kind of an odang that you'd find in Korea. Mm -hmm. And it just gets that broth into your, into, in, in, into your nostrils. The fish cake is good. Every bite's a little different. For 85 cents, this is so filling. You wouldn't think that you would get this quality on a river. You could sell this in a restaurant in LA or New York. I'm asking what, she, what she's doing later. Next, we're headed to a countryside noodle factory that's cranking out a ton of noodles called a... Uh, this is Kim Ung Factory and its CEO, Kong. Here they're making some of this country's most beloved noodles from scratch. What are the raw ingredients that go into the noodle itself? It starts with an enormous amount of ground rice mixed with water to form a silky white rice batter. One ingredient? Just rice. No. A little bit of tapioca. Hey, don't I yeah? Chup, một lọc. Holy shit. The conveyor belt guides the batter through a steamer, transforming it into thick, soft, elastic sheets. After resting for a moment on the rack, the rice sheets are sliced into squares. She's cutting the noodle down to a foot. That's so that she can put that into the machine later on and then make noodles out of it. At this stage, these noodle sheets are nearly identical to Vietnam's famous bon pho. What separates them is the next step. They're sent outside and set on racks to dry. It's about two or three hours in total, depending on the humidity of the air, depending on how hot it is. Once it's dry enough, then they pull it in. It does have a really nice mouthfeel. It feels a little more stickier than ban pho does. It is a little bit more chewy than a pho noodle. Well, the drying in the sun definitely removes the moisture. That's all I got. Fair. Once the noodles are not all but mostly dry, they head to the same place as Hillary Clinton's emails. You had to be really careful around here. This is my favorite part because you get to see some real action take place. Earlier on, the noodle is delicate. It has to be dried out. But now it's dry enough to be put through here. This is hudyuk, just a completely different texture than other noodles. No flavor. It is not dried all the way out. It's still a little bit of moisture in there. What do I do with this? Do I give it back? I'll give it to my camera guy. With the noodles now complete, they head out to nearby vendors who know exactly what to do with them. First, blanch the noodles. Then, add fried pork fat and garlic, sugar, and the secret meat sauce. Mix it up, then toss on a prolific pile of protein. Pork liver, pork heart, and more pork. Then pork intestines, and shrimp. Douse the bowl in more secret meat sauce and garnish with herbs. This is a dry noodle, so we're still in need of a bone broth sidecar with quail egg. Dude, I love intestines. I love chewiness. It threw me off because it has a room temperature intestine. What? Creamy inside? She braced it for a long time. That noodle is what I'm really interested in. What sauce is on here? It's her house sauce. She won't tell me exactly what's in there, but it's made out of soy sauce, chili sauce, and a few other spices, especially MSG. Yeah, my favorite spice. There's something about having fresh whole yeah. noodles. They're more chewier. I like it a lot. I would say this is like the ketchup noodles of Vietnam. Oh, I that, like that. Is that insulting? No, not at all. This is a bone broth made of pork and also dried squid. Oh, oh you got Nikon. I didn't get a dry squid. How come you got a dry squid? <laughs> Super complex, different levels of umami. It's like jumping in a pool on a hot summer's day. It just cleanses you from the inside. It's so refreshing. It does. Oh, look at that. The perfect bite. What a combo. It's so satisfying. The Mekong area is a very agricultural area. Everything on this dish came locally sourced. The circle of life here. Hakuna Matata. Mm-hmm. From north to south, we've intimately experienced 17 of this country's iconic noodles. Now, our final dish is in a category all its own. Half noodle, half dessert. A perplexing combination of sweet coconut cream and savory fish sauce. They're called silkworm noodles. And here's how they're made. Rice flour batter is cooked until it condenses into a thick glob of dough. 
The dough is kneaded to create a consistent texture. With some honey and oil, this doughy deity brings the noodles into existence by rolling out small portions into strands that resemble silkworms. Or so they say. Steam for 20 minutes and they're ready for what's next. My favorite part is that these are the most homemade noodles of any noodles we've seen from north to south. As I pick it off here, it's a little stretchy, a little elastic-y, super hot, silky, and soft, huh? Oh, wow. It's a little bit salty, but very, very, very soft. So I imagine once they mix this with some sauce, it's probably going to make it even softer. But people here in the Mekong Delta, they love it. The noodles are combined with bean sprouts, pork balls, pork meat, and pork skin. Then a generous dose of thick white coconut cream, a potent spoonful of chilies, and finally the fish sauce. I love savory foods and I love sweet foods. So mixing the two, I'm about to find out. It's like I'm late night, I'm feeling creative. I maybe have some herbal influences going on and I want to put everything together and pretend I'm Chef Gordon Ramsay. That's what this is. What's in here? Ground pork, some spices, black pepper, fish sauce. Mm. Mm. That's delicious, a little crumbly. Doesn't have that weird texture where you're like, that's not how meat should feel. A lot of pepper, I like it. And then there's literally everything else. Everything else just combines into this one thick mass. It's so confusing. I taste the spice. I didn't even see herbs, but I tasted the herbs. And then a little bit of sweetness. Definitely a ton of super soft texture from these noodles. That is a fascinating combination. Fascinating indeed. I tasted everything you have tasted. I have to say, it's not for me. It's the fish sauce and the coconut cream going together that is throwing off my palate a little bit. We've said how we feel about it, but what do you think it is that people around this region love so much about this food? Oh. You're the Mekong. Coconut is one of the top exporting items. They try to use everything that's localized, and this is very regional. If you grew up here, there is a 99.999% chance you'll be eating this growing up. From the rice to the pork to the coconut, all of that just screams Mekong Delta. <laughs> Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A peace. I am very hungover, and we woke up at 4 a.m. to do this. So it's a wholesale market, meaning... What does that mean? Don't eat again. Let's look at the flavor of composition in my, in my mind. Composition? Let's get back to land. Do we swim back? We will just use the boat that we're on, I think. Alright All right, guys, check it out. I did not pee my pants. This is just sweat. It is hot out here. But Sunny, I don't have anything in my pants. They're dry. I... Guys, that is it for our noodle tour that you've been watching over a series of days, weeks, or even years. I hope you enjoyed our noodle tour all the way from the north in Hanoi to the south here in the Mekong Delta. It has been quite an experience. And my gosh, Calvin, we did it. So many noodles. In fact, we had 23 noodle dishes, one country. We did it. We did it. We did it. A huge thank you to Calvin right here. You can follow Calvin at FKN Deliciousness on YouTube. He's also on Instagram. Follow his fun food adventures to see what he's up to. He's very charismatic off camera, I swear to God. That is it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. A, a peace. peace. All right. I have a lot of floral shirts. Should I start wearing floral underwear? No. Oh, yeah. Wear more floral stuff. Oh, we need more flowers sure. in this world. Oh, we do, don't we? There's never enough flowers.